Ladies and gentlemen, it is finally time for me to welcome all of you to the first ever Europe University Star League Finals. I am super excited to uh, be asked to host this. Welcome to all of you guys who sit here and welcome to everyone who is sitting at home watching on the stream. And for anyone who doesn't know, University Star League was founded the last October 2012. So that is not a long time ago. And you can see that these guys have worked really hard and this event is looking really, really nice. So during this first season that the University Star League has had, we have seen 64 players uh, play against each other. And today we are down to the final 16 who today will battle it out, today and tomorrow will battle it out to be the first ever champion of the, of the University Star League. So these two days are going to look like this. I'm going to go through the schedule quick. Uh, both days are divided into two blocks. Uh, the first one starts now, obviously. The next one starts 6 o'clock, um, and tomorrow it's 1 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Today, we will play through the entire round of 16. First, four matchups, then four matchups, too. And tomorrow, we'll have the round of eight, semifinals, and finals. But not only are you able to watch StarCraft here, you're also able to play StarCraft because we have a Heart of the Swarm here for anyone who want to try and perhaps haven't tried it yet. And we're also going to have a smaller Heart of the Swarm tournament called Kerrigan Cup. And obviously, what self-respecting tournament is without a BarCraft? Of course we have a BarCraft, so anyone over 18 are free to enjoy a uh, refreshing beverage at the bar. And you can also win a Heart of the Swarm collector's edition by painting Space Marines. You can see them outside for anyone who is here. And um, University Star League has really been about relaxing and fun for everyone. Everyone's been invited, even the lowest league can be able to play. And talk a little bit more about that. I would like to welcome two of the founders up on stage, Petter and Robert. <laughs> How are you guys doing? This is a big day for you. Oh, this is, this is the biggest of days. Yeah, yes, it's finally here. Uh, we, well, we had an idea of, of sorts to just start a tournament of fun types because we felt that, well, there's not enough casual gaming. <laughs> and we decided that, well, why not shoot big while, we, while we're doing it? So um, a few months ago, we started something that was go growing throughout a bunch of, uh, a bunch of events that we costed. Uh, just put together for fun to work into through a tournament and we had no idea that we would actually manage to end up here uh, which is brilliant and uh, well right now we're just so excited that we want to keep doing the second version of this and do it even bigger and bigger and bigger but for today we're finally here this is the finals we have 16 awesome players and this is going to be so much fun so you're you're like an interviewer's dream. I don't even have to ask you, you questions. You don't have to ask me anything. You have to tell me to stop. <laughs> okay. That's why I'm costing, I think. But, yeah. uh, I want to hear a bit more about the vision of University Star Club League. Yes. Uh, obviously, it's only for students. It's only for students. And the point is that we felt that, well, as students, uh, you don't have enough time for gaming anymore. When you start studying, especially at the KTH or any other type of this, this type of school, there's not that much time for actual gaming for you. Uh, as well as... Uh, the point, when you start working, you move into yeah the the, the, the grown-up part of your life, and we decided that why why couldn't gaming be a, a part of your grown-up part of life? Uh, and we want to start a community around that. Basically, with people on this level, uh, we want to start um, we want to start um, events. We want to have streams. We want to have productions for people our own age, people who think like us, people who like gaming, uh, don't have all the time in the world to put into it, and we want to do them good. We want to, this is important for us, and we want this to be important for our community as well. So the point is, when people come here, we want people to feel a part of this whole movement. We want to create a bigger movement out of this, and we want to possibly add late, more games later on. We want to move uh, to the all of Sweden uh, in the next version. We want to move to the Nordics, and then keep carrying carrying on if we can and basically uh, the point is we're not pros but everyone who comes here need, gets to relax and enjoy an awesome production and every player is going to be treated as a pro and every matchup is going to be treated as it's the best matchup in the world because 
if we want to do something, we want to enjoy it together and we want to make it awesome. Mm. So, you have a nice, t- um, I read a text where you explain your vision. You talk a lot yeah. about being relaxed, being immature. Exactly. What do you mean by that? Well, relaxed and mature. Uh, there, there's a lot of productions. Uh, I mean, DreamHack is an, uh, is an obviously awesome production. Uh, but for many people starting working, it's, it's out of many points of view, views, uh, many points of view, you, you, you possibly don't want to go there anymore because you don't have the time. Uh, it's also for mainly a lot younger people. It's people aged down to, I don't know, 12 hanging around there. And, you know, it's, it's completely fine. But we want something for us, something a little bit more mature, uh, where we can hang around and grab a beer if we want to, without having to be shut down into a co- small corner of the building. And uh, we want to just hang around and talk with people our own age, uh, people who, who have the same, same problems with not having the, all the time in the world to game. We want to be able to talk about the games we grew up with. We want to be able to do, you know, just talk with people in our position, in, well, in, in our vicinity. And we're going to be able to meet up. And for that, the whole point and the idea of this is that everyone on screen, on, on stream, the casters, the people, need to be people you identify with in this mm-hmm. group. So we want to be relaxed. We want to be the kind of people that you would, you'd want to grab a beer with and sit down and talk about your favorite game with. Um, so that's what we want to do. Mm-hmm. Basically, I have grabbed a beer with you guys. Yes, uh, it was awesome. Yeah, we're we'll gonna grab another one in the future. Uh, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you were talking about the future, and yeah. I know that you have plans to expand not only to Sweden but maybe make this, uh, like I almost said, European university start. Well, oh, we'd love to be a European league. Uh, that would be absolutely brilliant. For the next version, this is basically we started from the beginning. We had no idea what we were doing. Uh, so the point was this whole first tournament has been to put together everything we need to take the stepping stones into really firing this up. So for the next version, we're going to look up uh, a lot of bigger sponsors. We have two awesome sponsors that helped us complete and Cupid have helped us so much actually getting this done because we were were on a completely zero budget in every way. So we're going to look up, uh, get big sponsorships. We're going to get the information out. We now have a lot of promotion materials we can get out and we're going to spread this across Sweden so that we can see a lot of all all of the other universities and and, and schools coming in here and competing against Stockholm, uh, which would be so much fun. And after that, yes, we want to take it to the Nordics. Uh, We're going to get a large Nordics tournament and that's basically where, well, uh, our plans are about there as of right now. But of course, in the back of our minds, we'd, we'd love to expand this to a Europe version. It's good to have visions yes. and ideas. Robert, you have been responsible for choosing the maps. And yes. we have quite an interesting map pool. Could you just like, uh, tell us who the maps, uh, which the maps are and why you choose those? We have a couple of ordinary maps, or ordinary, more seen maps. We have WCS versions of them. We have Cloud Kingdom, that's an old popular favorite. We have Daybreak, we have Ohana, and we have Entombed Valley. In addition to that, we also have a couple of unorthodox maps. We have the new Blizzard Aquilon Flats, which is a new version of the Heart of a Swarm map. It has less rocks and, in my opinion, is simply better. And then we have a Kespa map that's called Neo Planet S. I, fi- I find it really interesting in the geometrics which it's built up in. It makes for a lot of entertaining gameplay. And uh, the last map is Bel- Belshire Vestige. And it's a GSL map. And I find it to be one of the least or most underused maps since it's it's really interesting and it comes with a lot of good games, especially in CVT, in my opinion. I think it's really exciting to see you mix it up a bit. Um, could you tell us a bit about what you expect from the players, how they will handle the maps? I have seen a couple of players being really excited for the new maps. I also have seen some players being a little bit uncomfortable just because we are pressing on with new maps. And for a long while right now, we've been stuck in this Ohana, Entombed Valley, Daybreak, Cloud Kingdom, yeah. all these quote-unquote ordinary maps. And 
I mean, there is still a lot of good maps. I remember in the back of the day when we have Steps of War on every tournament. We had Lost Temple on every tournament. And we want to take a step away from that and just keep pushing. Because there's a lot of good map makers. I mean, Casper, Korean, Foreigner, it doesn't matter. It always comes up new good stuff. And a lot of the maps have been figured out. And I think it... It leads to more entertaining gameplay if you put players in a situation where they aren't so comfortable. Mm, I like this very much. So you've been following the players who's been uh, through this tournament. What do you think we have to expect from these 16 uh, StarCraft players? Awesome games. And, Obviously. Uh, I'll, unfortunately, I don't think we'll see Berlshire Vestige as much as it's worth seeing. It's a brilliant map. Unfortunately, many of these players haven't been watching the GSL from Korea. And, I mean, it's, it's such a shame. It's such a good map. And the same with uh, Neo Planet S. It's a Casper map, which means it's been played in Pro League and also in GSL. And it's such a shame that our players have been more accustomed to these uh, European foreigner type maps. I mean, the Team Liquid map contests have two maps in this map mode. No, three maps. Wuhana is the runner-up, the Daybreak is a winner, and the Cloud Kingdom is a winner. Mm. So, I mean, there are great maps, but unfortunately we've been put into a bit of a slump. Everybody has been accustomed to playing on these stuffs. You really like maps. I, <laughs> I find that they are the source for best gameplay. That's why we have him. He's our Obviously. map guy. Yeah. I mean, maps... If you have a four, four times four, you always leads to confusing gameplay. If it's a good map for four, four times four, four versus four, it leads to better. And I mean, if we play on Steps of War, a Zerg versus Terran, I mean, it isn't fun as much as if, if, as if it was played on a good map, such as Cloud Kingdom, or Neo Planet S, or Daybreak. And I mean, the more you mix it up, the more varied gameplay you see. Mm. So it's not just about the players, it's more so about the map pool as well. So, uh. yeah, no, I just wanted to add that. I think, it, I think so as well. Um, there's a lot of under-representation in, in, or it's not debated as much, but maps really do play a large role in the game. So, um, yes, trying to bring in more new creative gameplay, it's, it's a lot of fun. And yeah, as... We also want to promote the point that Blizzard really made by taking in Cloud Kingdom and the, the ones through map competition that we, we really need to think about that a lot more. It's, there's a lot of more effort that needs to be put down into choosing good maps. Mm. So that's why we have Robert. Yeah, but it's an Good interesting time. issue. I like yep. that you bring it up. Yep. Uh, so what, shortly, what are we to expect from these two days? Oh, we're going to expect some, uh, some awesome games. There's a lot of uh, very nervous players, actually. Uh, these are people studying here, uh, a few Stockholm University people, but mainly KGH people. So uh, the point is they haven't really played at these types of venues. And I mean, look at this. This is awesome. It is amazing. It's yes. great. So um, there's going to be a few nervous people, uh, but they're all very, very... Very, very pumped for this. And our observer B man was logged in, logged into the game um, here half past one last night, uh, and the Universal channel was full of players uh, practicing for today already. So a lot of very eager players, a lot of very nervous players, but they're all here to really give their best, and uh, we appreciate that, and we're going to treat them that way because for us, they are the best. That sounds really great. And thank you guys for coming up here on the stage, everyone. Uh, University Star League. Mm -hmm.